do you, you say that uh, there's circadian system and then it interacts with the environment? Um, and you you specifically uh, mentioned light exposure. Yeah. So what's the interaction there, and how does light regulate our circadian rhythm? Uh, well, um, I, this is my career. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> the right guy for the job. But, but I'll try and be brief. Sure, um, sure. So I was fascinated, really. Okay, we, we know we, we got the circadian system, but how is the internal clock uh, system aligned to the external world? And we knew light dark was was critical uh, mammals who have no eyes or if you cover their eyes um cannot entrain this clock so the clock keeps on ticking but it drifts with its own period uh, through time now it's in the eye but the real problem i had is that the sensory task of vision grabbing light by the rods and the cones, the visual cells of right. the eye, is a very different sensory task from the regulation of circadian rhythms. So what the visual system has to do is grab light and then in a fraction of a second forget it's seen it. it it's building an image of our world. What the clock needs is exposure to light over long periods at sort of dawn and dusk. Okay. It's a, it's, so you're integrating light over long periods of time. And it was unclear how that was actually being achieved by the under uh, by by the defined receptors within the eye, the rods and cones. So started and I and I started this work at the University of Virginia when I was based there, using mice with hereditary retinal disorders. They were mice that, that were being studied to, to try and understand human uh, eye disease. And what was truly extraordinary is that um, mutations whereby the visual cells had largely broken down, they'd largely degenerated, those mice could regulate their clock with normal sensitivities. And we thought, oh, wow, that's extraordinary. And I remember giving a, a talk um, at a big vision meeting uh, and saying, well, you know, our data are consistent with the fact that there must be something else in the eye, another light sensor. And one chap at the back of the auditorium stood up and I thought he was asking a question and looked me in the eye and just said, bullshit. Um, <laughs> and, watch out. and, you know, the, the, the idea, and one, one person said to me in, with incredible anger, do you, are you really telling us that after 150 years of study of the eye, the best understood part of the central nervous system, we have all missed a novel receptor within the eye and you have found it? Um, and of course, I was much younger, full of sort of confidence. Right, and I right, sort of right. Well, <laughs> that's consistent with the data. But, but the big criticism was, um, okay, well, perhaps it's just a small number of rods and cones left in the eye. And that's all you need to regulate the clock. Now, there's good theoretical reasons why that was wrong. But what we had to do was then genetically engineer a mouse where there were no rods, no cones. And what happened was that the circadian system was perfectly fine. It remained it could, intact. It remained, you could regulate the clock perfectly well with light. And that discovery that there had to be another receptor um, led to David Burson working on the rat. Um, mm -hmm. We were working on the mouse and Dennis Dacey on, on the macaque, a, a primate, showed that in fact there is a third receptor system. It's based upon a small number of ganglion cells. Now the ganglion cells in the retina are those cells whose axons, whose projections give rise to the optic nerve. And so one out of every hundred of those ganglion cells is directly light sensitive. And it uses a, a special light sensing molecule, a photopigment that has been called melanopsin, which was originally discovered by Iggy Preventhia, who, who was one of my first PhD students, in fact. Oh, wow. he, he went on and was working on the the light-sensitive pigment cells in the skin of frogs. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Iggy was fantastic. And, and when he <laughs> left that after his PhD, he said, I'm never going to work in mice again. They're smelly, they're expensive, and they bite me. So I'm going to work on frogs. Um, and of course, <laughs> in the process of doing that, he, he discovered that there was a light-sensitive photopigment in the skin. And what's truly remarkable is that that same gene encoding that photopigment uh, is turning up in those ganglion cells and in other structures as well. So uh, there's this whole brightness detector system uh, out there which is regulating not only the clock but a whole range of other things. One of our early discoveries was that these, these non-rod, non-cone 
photoreceptors, these photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, actually contribute to the pupil constriction. Um, and they're actually regulating other aspects of our, our physiology and behavior, not least sleep. They will directly interact with the sleep systems and either promote or uh, inhibit uh, sleep uh, occurring. 